and welcome to Hope Elam Church. We are so glad that you joined us. We are in just a moment going to be hearing the sermon from Sunday, um, but before we get to that, please go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up and let's get ready to go and hear this powerful word. We hope that it blesses you the way that God desires to bless you. Let's go. Amen. 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 Listen, uh, Hope Elam, I think we should get used to just sitting, standing in the presence of God, just sitting with him. Sometimes the things that we're looking for, uh, yeah, we need a word from the Lord. But sometimes, you know, what helps us to really um, embrace that spark, that thing, the, the word, whatever it is that God is doing is when our hearts are open and saturated and it doesn't take much. So at some point, it's almost our advantage to just sit with him and let the anointing of God fall. Because sometimes we get, we get so locked in on a rhythm and the enemy knows our rhythm. So sometimes we got to switch it up. <laughs> sometimes we got to go left when we went right and come back and then go forward. Sometimes we just got to switch it up because sometimes we just keep doing things before we know it. It's just a habit. It's just a routine. It becomes stagnant. It becomes dry. And we wonder why we're not saturated, why our blessings and the fruit is not coming. It's because we keep doing the same thing the same old way. Because God has gifted us with, with many gifts in this house, then we ought to give God room to do whatever he want to do. And at some point, we're going to get out in a good time, but at some point, we got to sit with him. Amen? Amen. So we're going we're gonna to get there. And so today, um, I'm going to say it like this. We, we're in this new, we won't be here long, but we're in this new sermon series, Faith on Film. And we're going to get to that. But if you want to know my desire today for Hope Elam and for you and everybody under the sound of my voice, is that you no longer be afraid. That you no longer be afraid. That, that you would be emboldened with power. That it won't be of your own power. It would be a Holy Ghost power. The one that you've been hearing about, the one in the Greek, they say dunamis. That meant the, the Greek was the, a power of the authority of God and the ability of God. Because some of us right now, the reason why we're scared, the reason why our lives are filled with fear is because we have not been walking in dominion and with the authority of God. And part of the authority of God comes with his word. God's word, when it goes out, it shall not return void. It will accomplish what it sets out to do. And so at some level, as we enter into the things that we are afraid about, the things that we're scared, the things that we have fear, we are entering in of our own accord. And God is saying to us that he has already given us a spirit of power, not of fear. And so today, can we trust the ability of God, regardless of what you've seen in your lifetime, regardless of what you've heard happen in other people's lives, can we give God room to do whatever he want to do, and that we no longer be afraid. This morning, I want to talk about fear and why it grips us so much. Fear is an emotive response. I mean, all of us have fear. It's what we do with it. Sometimes that fear, it's you know, it's a behavioral response, and sometimes we want to we want to fight back. Sometimes, listen, hope, listen. Sometimes we need to fight back. Sometimes there need to be a righteous indignation of some of the things that we see go on, not only in the church, but in the neighborhood and in our lives. There are some times that we need to not stay in that situation. We need to run as far as we can because the situation we're in is not where God has called us. Sometimes the fear is God saying, get out of there. Sometimes we freeze. We, we stuck because we don't know if to go left or go right because every time we move, it don't work in our favor. And I want to say today that God is ready to take us from fear to faith, but first we've got to deal with our fear. Obilum, most of the times we experience fear is when it's dark. It's when we can't really see 
what's coming up. It's when there's uncertainty and we don't know if it's going to work out in our favor. And so because life has been to where it has not always been the way we want, we don't know if it's going to work or not. So we have fear that it's going to work, but God says we ought to have faith and not fear. But when it's dark, it's hard because you can't see. When I was growing up in Louisiana, uh, it's like there were houses here and there was a little driveway alley and our house was back here. All the lights was over there. And in the back over here, we had lights in the house when it was time to go to bed. It was dark. And because in Louisiana, most of the houses, my little shotgun house, it was on cinder blocks. Hey, I'm sure you don't know nothing about cinder blocks. That was the houses set on the corner. So when the wind blew hard, there were crooks and crannies. There were sounds. At times, I could understand when it was dark how to move around the house as a kid, but I was afraid of the dark because I, I didn't always know. I, I thought the coat rack might be somebody in the house. I, I thought that, that maybe the, the hoodie that was laying over the chair might be somebody snooping down. I didn't know. I mean, in my mind, I knew it was okay, but the emotion I felt was still fear. And maybe you're here right now, and you're in a situation that you have an emotive response of fear, but you're getting comfortable with the fear. And God is saying to us, he don't, you, he don't want us to walk in fear. He wants to walk in faith. And so when it was dark, sometimes what it would create is doubt. I, I knew it, but I, I didn't know, and sometimes I couldn't sleep because I had to go and touch it to make sure it was okay. And maybe you hear right now in the fear, the, the uncertainty that you're feeling right now is because you're doubting. You're, you're not sure if God is going to move in your favor. You're not sure if you want God to reign over and take over. You're not sure. And so it, it seems like fuzzy. It's dark. When it's dark and you have doubt, sometimes it's for good reason. Because you've, you've experienced danger in your life. And can I tell you, in that little house in Louisiana, the reason why I could have some fear is because someone, at some point in my life, they did try to get in the house. They did try to break in. They did try to cause harm. So at some point, maybe you have some trauma. Maybe you have some experiences in your life that, that quickens your body, triggers you. But you've been walking in fear. And you've been afraid to step out into the space and the place that God is calling you because you don't know. It's uncertain. You have doubt. But God has spoken in your life. And the problem is you've heard God's voice before and it had not always come when you wanted to come and you gave up on it. And I'm saying right now in the midst of the danger, in the midst of the dark, in the midst of the doubt, God says keep walking. Sometimes... The reason why we have fear is, is not only that, my dad was around most time, but sometimes his job had him out of town. And when he had to go out of town, sometimes it felt like we were abandoned. Sometimes it felt like we were deserted. Because the fear still came, I felt a little bit better. When I knew my daddy was in the house, when I knew my father was in the house, I felt a little bit better when I was in his presence. But when, my, but when I wasn't inside or, or inside the presence of my father, I felt a little bit more trepidation. And maybe you're here, and there was a time in your life that you was walking with your father, you was walking with God, and now you've been on the outskirts, and it's still dark. You still have doubt, but you don't feel the same way. You don't feel the same peace because you feel abandoned. The people who said that they was going to help you, the people who said that I'll never leave you, they ain't there no more. So you built up these walls, and you're living inside this, this fear crucible. And maybe, maybe, maybe here's the deal. At one point, while I kept leaning on daddy, and I, I didn't know him, I knew of him, but I didn't know him. And when daddy was gone, when death comes knocking at your door. When death comes, and sometimes the biggest fear as a parent is that you lose your child. The biggest fear for children is that mom or dad and them will no longer be there. And it gets dark. It gets hard to keep going. But God still is speaking into your life. And I come by to say today, my, my hope is that we would not be afraid anymore. Sometimes we're going to have to fight. But we're going to be ready to fight for God's sake. Sometimes we're going to have to flee 
there's some things right now God says get out of there that ain't for you that's not going to lead to where your promise is and it's going to lead to where your inheritance is God says get out of there and you know it but you don't have the courage because right now it's comfortable to stay in that fear it's comfortable to stay in that thing God says get up go where I'm calling you to go there's more fruit over there there's light over there Sometimes the reason why we just get so disappointed is because of this. Sometimes, if you let me set it up, this faith on film is a very familiar movie, but like Simba, maybe you've been afraid because you've been deceived, and now you spend most of your life hiding. Like Simba, maybe you were anointed to be king anointed to be a queen, anointed to have great work done. But because of fear, because of what somebody else said, because of maybe disappointment, you've run away and now you've been hiding and you've been hiding in darkness and you've accepted the place that you're in. And I stop by to tell somebody the way you cannot be afraid anymore is to remember who you are. I suspect. That's not my father. It's just my reflection. No. Look hard. You see, he lives in you. go back. I'm not who I used to be. Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. Remember who you are. No, please, don't leave me. Father, Some might say that I was a little wound up and I missed the, to let the kids out. Uh, others might say, I really wanted them to see the clip on The Lion King. <laughs> kids, if you're here, you're dismissed to your awesome ministries if you're here. Ah, uh, look at that. See, we good. All right. I think sometimes we look in the mirror and while we should see a reflection of our Heavenly Father, sometimes what we see is a reflection of who the world say we are. And, and as much as we hear the prophet, the word, as much as we see God moving, we still see our flaws. We still see the labels. We still see those areas of our lives that has not been a shining light. So I'm going to do this, and it won't take long, and there's plenty others, and I'm going to ask that you stand and be recognized, because I want you to see an image and a reflection of our Heavenly Father. I know of one, and there's plenty more. If you're here today, and you have reached, at any point in your life, another milestone in your sobriety or your addiction, rather than have you stand up, and I know there's others, well done for a year making a year, and I'm proud of you. I want you to know that. And if you're here, and there's others, I see you. Yeah, I see you. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you, Doc. I see you, Charles. I see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you look, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. When you look in the mirror, when you look in the water, you see uh, 
That's not my father. Yes, it is. You are exactly your heavenly father's image. And you have no longer to be afraid. You walk by faith and not by sight. Be encouraged this morning. We love you. We see you. And you look just like your father. You can have a seat. Amen. Simba was confused. He was hiding. Sometimes we get afraid, fear of failure, fear of opposition and people in our lives, fear of the future. But we can no longer have to be afraid. And I'm going to go through these and we're going to get to it. Listen, from fear to faith, remember who you are. Remember who you are. And that's the sermon. Remember who you are. David, King David, was anointed in 1 Samuel 16. It wasn't all the brothers who was paraded before, before Samuel. It was the little sheep boy, the one who was taking care of the sheep. He was the one anointed. If you remember how Lion King starts, it starts with everybody coming to bow down to this new anointed little cub, anointed to be king, but yet he ran. David, the same way, anointed to be king. In 1 Samuel 16, 13, it says that he was anointed to be king. But in 14, the very next verse, it said that the spirit of God left Saul and left him. And God gave him a spirit of a torment. And that spirit of a torment made Saul depressed and full of fear. The only way he could be, be calmed is when he had somebody play music. And David was a beautiful musician. And David, the one who was anointed to be king, went to the, to the house. And before long, he was in a place in a space where he was trying to be killed. That's how Scar was to Simba, and we're going to leave that there. We're going to stay in the Word. At the end of the day, God allowed for hearts to be knitted together, a David and a Jonathan. Listen, when you have moments in your life that God sends you people to knit your hearts together with them, and to love them the way they love you. When God sends you somebody to walk alongside you, it's precious, so take care. It was, it was Jonathan, it was the son of Saul that helped David to escape. It was this relationship that made a difference that, that David didn't have to be afraid. He had somebody helping him, somebody pulling for him. And if you're here today, you got somebody, a brother, a sister, uh, a daddy, a mom, you got somebody in your life walking alongside. Do you know how precious it is? What we ought to be fearing is fearing to lose the love of someone who you know got your back up or down. At some point in our lives, we got to be able to go 10 toes down and say, God, thank you that you cared enough to send somebody. That's what David and Jonathan represented. So in this text... God was faithful enough in the midst of the darkness that David was experiencing. He sent some light. He allowed his ability and he allowed his authority that was given for for David to be into the the palace so that the light of, of Jonathan can shine so that now David, he could see clarity. He could see things being revealed. He can see vision and comfort and hope. And maybe you're here right now. And the reason why you can't see your way out because you can't, you can't, you don't have any light that's shining in your life. And can I say this? If you're here today and you feel like this lighthouse, every time you come, it shines in your heart. And then when you leave, yeah, stuff happens in the world. That same light, that same power of the Holy Ghost leaves with you. That's why we come and we saturate ourselves. We allow overflow in our lives because we're going to need it when we go out there. Because then we can trust, and, and Julian helped us last week, that, that peace is not a place or a position, it's a person. Once we come to understand the person of God, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't just reside and abide and live here. He lives inside the tent, and the tent is you and me. We are the tabernacle. We are the house of God. That's where the Holy Spirit lives. He don't just live here. God be praised that MLK spoke on this stage. God be praised that we have so many opportunities to dwell with him. But when we walk out those doors, that same spirit, it's the same spirit that we can walk without fear. 2 Corinthians, chapter 2 Timothy 1, 
2 Timothy 1, the Bible says in verse 7, it said, God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and of sound mind. That what's inside of you, Hope Elam, what's inside of me is the power of an almighty God that can shift the atmosphere, not because of who you are, but because of who he is. When we call upon his mighty name and we invite him into our situation, everything must change. Because if he steps in, I guarantee you, he might come help you be helping everybody in the house. So when you come and you get prayer, when you come and you say, uh, I need prayer, when you come and say, I'm afraid, when he come and he blesses you, he blessing everybody. Light and darkness. That's why David could say that the Lord is my light. I'm trying to click it so we can go to the next one. <laughs> the Lord is my light and my salvation. When you know what you know, you are a reflection of your father. Jesus said in John 8, 12, he says, look, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness. Then he tells us we are the light of the world. That was in Matthew 5. But here in Psalm, David already knew. The, he already knew. He said, look, the Lord is my light. He gives me direction. He's the one that gives me guidance. In fact, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's how I figure out which way I can go. I don't have to be afraid walking in darkness anymore. And because I know that he's there with me, I can call out on him to him and he can deliver me. He is my savior. He is my salvation. He is the one who keeps me when I can't keep myself. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And in King James, it says, the Lord is my strength. That means he is, he is my dunamis. That means he is my, my, my solid rock. That's who he is. David kept going and said, look, even when evil people, people don't mean me any good. Yeah. <laughs> evil people, I'm surrounded that don't mean, God said, well, they meant for evil. God would turn it into good. So whatever it is, when you see people scheming, you walk heavy in the Lord and watch God just let them fall by the wayside, fall by the wayside. He said, even when my enemies attack me, he said, I'm going to be confident because they're going to stumble and fall. And listen, what we're talking about is folks who are minions of the one who's the prince of this world. I'm talking about the ones who try to work in and through us to deceive and divide all of us. Those folks, they're going to stumble and fall. By the way, can I just go ahead and you know it? Ephesians 4, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So when you look at your neighbor or you look at your, your coworker, you look at your boss, you look at the person who is opposing you, that ain't your enemy. The enemy is just using that person to oppose you. The enemy is the one that is allowing themselves to stay in darkness to be thinking about how they're going to get at you. The enemy is the one who is the prince of, peace, prince of the evilness of this world, not the prince of peace. So we trust it. First, in the person of God, then we trust in the promises of God. We trust his word. We stand on his word. We grow. But then we start to trust the protection of God. That even when an army, when you're outnumbered, when everybody say you can't do it, when an army gather around you, that's the time to be even more confident because you know your heavenly father ain't going to sit idly by and watch you go down like that. Not when you're walking in truth. So you walk circumspectly before the Lord. You trust his protection. He say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high, whew, if you stay close, shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. The closer we stay with him, the more protection we got. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. And all that you do in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll give you some guy. He'll, he'll put a light on your situation. Sometimes, let me, can I tell you, sometimes God wants us to speak life. But yet what we do is we use a razor. What we do is instead of speaking life, we cut people. Instead of speaking life, we use the word like a razor. And God said, no, I want you to use the word like a laser. 
A laser is what they use is to heal and to, to, to seal up and to make things better. A razor cuts you up and leaves you bleeding. God said, use the word so that you can build up and not tear down. Trust the Lord in his protection. God is our refuge and strength. Present help when trouble comes. He's our refuge. That means he's got us covered. All we need is what we got, and all we got is what we need. God is our refuge. He got us covered. He's got our back, a shelter, a strong tower, a refuge. He's not only a refuge. He is our rock, our strength. We're stable. When life hits us and rocks us and catches us off guard and we startle because of fear, we still got our footing because we built and standing on the rock. Our refuge, our rock, but also he's ready. Whenever trouble comes, he's present right there ready in the time of trouble. The one thing, David said, just the one thing, out of all the stuff, you know what can help us not be afraid the most, Laron? You know what can help us the most? It's being in his presence. David said, Shanice, one thing have I desired of the Lord. Like, I'm sure he had other things, but this thing might have been more than any other thing that he ever wanted because he learned through experience. If I can get in the presence of an almighty God, all my fears, all my headaches, all my stuff, they can't get to me there. They can't get me when I'm in his presence. He said, one thing that I've desired is that I can dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, just so I can gaze of his beauty in this temple that I could see him, that the God of the universe, that I could see a glimpse of his glory. I don't mind if I can just see his, his backside. God, I just want a glimpse of who you are. Because when I get in your presence, you make the crooked straight, the rough, plain, bitter, sweet. When you show up, you fix everything. So I thought about, well, what is he really saying? He's saying, listen, where you go, where do you go when you don't know where to go? Go home. See, I can't wait to get to the house of the Lord. See, I can't wait. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's where my joy is. That's where my covering is. I wonder, somebody said, well, look, I feel right at home when I come to Hope Elam. God be praised, but you need another place. You need a place where you can be at home with him because home is not a physical address or physical address. It is a spiritual access. It is a place in him. It's a place in God that the enemy cannot come. In fact, it's a place in God that is home. It is our heavenly father. In John 14, he says, look, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me because in my father's house, there's mansions and there's rooms. I'm home when I get there. I'm home when I get there and I'm home right now. The God that I serve, he says, look, you don't have to worry because you can't get yourself there. Where well, I'm going to take you only, you can get there only one way. He says that you got to understand that Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man get to this house without going through him. One thing he said I desire, that I can dwell, I can be home with him. He can scoop me up and the daddy that I didn't have. He can be my daddy, the mother that I didn't have. He can be my mother, the friend that I didn't have. He can be my friend, the brother I didn't have. He can be my brother. When I get home, he conceals me. He keeps me when I couldn't keep myself. You wonder why danger is seen and unseen. You wonder why sometimes you go and you stop and somebody comes racing through and you don't know how you got there. He keeps you, conceals you holds you in his hands. And then you wonder, well, why some people got to go through hardship? Why does it hit others and not? Uh, I don't know. We'll understand it better by and by. Matter of fact, there were some guys this morning, three of them was hit by a van, drunk driver. Two of them was in the service this morning. One is lying in the hospital. I don't know. But he still keeps us, conceals us. We got to know that we don't have to be afraid because this is not our home. This is not our home. He's got a home not made with hands, a home over in glory. And whether I'm here or whether I'm there, I'm still at home. 
When I know the truth, the truth shall make you free. So remember who you are. It's time to step into that thing. It's time to face that giant. It's time to make that call. It's time to do the thing that God, you know God has been telling you to do. It's time to pack your bags. Afraid of that giant. God says, as long as you trust in me and you're following me, he says, I am going to deliver you. I am going to rescue you. And when you do, he says, then, David said, then I'm going to hold my head up high. Not as if I'm somebody, but I'm going to give him glory, the one who delivered me, the one who took me and, and let me understand that, that truly he'll put my feet upon the rock. Why? Because I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. It's not something that I do. I'm just a reflection of my father. So we trust the praise of God. Why do we trust the praise of God? Because he, he, he inhabits the praises of his people. When we begin to praise God from the inside, when we begin to praise God, and we just want him to be delighted, when we begin to praise God, and it comes from somewhere way down on the inside, it's an offering that we give to him. No one has to tell us to raise our hands or to, to lift our voice. There's something that begins to un unfold in our lives. A spark becomes on fire. And before we know it, we're here at the altar saying, thank you, God. Sometimes before he can put your feet upon a rock, you got to be willing to stoop at the altar. And maybe you're here in this time. Maybe you're here and you've been waiting to understand the power that is within you, within the word of God. We trust the person of God. We trust the promise of God. We trust the protection of God. We trust the praise of God that God will enter into that space and that place. But we trust the, 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 the proclamation of his word. And if you're here today, don't leave this space. You know why we say come to the altar and know I'm done. You come to the altar to offer him your sacrifice. It was on the altar they brought the sacrifice. It was an offering that they made. And if they did it out of obligation, he said, it stinks. He wanted a sweet-smelling savor, something we offer up to him. So if you're here today, I'm going to ask that you stand. We're doing something a little different. You heard more worship on the front side? We're going to get to end it a little bit right here, right now. Will you please stand? And God, even as we're preparing now, God, for those who are here, if there's prayer partners that are here, God, I pray that you will send them down right now. Send them down with an expectation to speak life into some situations, to speak health over those areas of fear. And God, if we don't have any prayer partners, God, I'll be down just in a second so everybody can just wait on me. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Pastor. If you're here today, come on, man. Thank God for what he has done. Thank God for who he is. Who knows if you're going to get another chance to say, God, here I am, and I just want to offer myself unto you. He said to all of us, he said that we ought to offer ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We can't offer somebody else's sacrifice. Thank you, Julie, for coming up and praying. We, if you're here today, I'm going to ask that you push past the fear, push past the stuff, if somebody said it last week, if, if God got time, I'm sure we got time. God, even now, compel the heart, the one that you have been waiting for. Compel that one. God, the one who got their one desire, <laughs> the one thing for them is to dwell in your house. Let them come and offer that thing to them, to you. God, the prayer is that no one will leave here afraid. God, that we could trust you. That David gave us reason to know that we can trust you. And God, I pray they will come like a flood. And God, that as we soon gonna leave this place, that we don't leave your presence, Father God. And God, that you would dwell with us, that we would be at home with you. God, we love you and we adore you. Now unto him who's able 
to keep us from falling. The one who's able to present us faultless before his own presence. To the only wise God, be glory, dominion, majesty, splendor. To that only wise God, God, we give it all to you. And all the saints of God said together, amen. Amen. So now that we've come and we've had church, unless you come in to pray, then let's go and be the church. God bless you. Amen. We'll be here. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Listen, if you uh, feel like you would like someone to pray with you or you want to reach out to us, please go ahead and check out the email address. We would love to hear from you. And as far as the rest of this day and this week, be blessed and know that God is for you. Take care.